So let's talk about what this man discovered. Well, actually, it was Einstein who provided the first proof that atoms really did exist. This was an argument that had gone on in science for 25 centuries. And no one could decide one way or the other whether it was true that there really were atoms. Nowadays, we know everything that we see around us is made of atoms. And nowadays, with our most advanced microscopes, we can actually image individual atoms. These are xenon atoms sitting on a nickel plate, imaged by an atomic force microscope in the central research labs of some big company. <laughs> Next, Einstein solved the mystery of the photoelectric effect, which is the basis for solar cells, night vision systems, and the charge couple devices that are in all of our video cameras, digital cameras, and in all modern telescopes, including the Hubble Space Telescope. <clears throat> Einstein also developed a theory for lasers. Lasers are based on Einstein's work. They sculpt our cornea, they read our CDs and DVDs, scan our barcodes, and carry our telecommunications for the internet and for telephone across internet uh, fiber optic cables throughout the world. They are also the basis of countless medical devices, electronic devices, industrial devices, military devices, and my little pointer. And if you manage to get to where you want to go, you can thank the man who could never find his keys because the GPS system was invented by Einstein, the theory behind it. And if without Einstein, the GPS would be off by six miles cumulatively every day. So if you got to your house on Monday night, you'd be in the wrong city on Tuesday night and out in the ocean by the end of the week. Einstein also made major contributions to quantum mechanics that resulted in solid state physics and all the digital and computer devices that we have in our society today. And finally, his most famous equation, E equals MC squared, was the basis for the development of the nuclear weapons that ended the Second World War, is the basis of all nuclear power plants in operation today and as I hope to discuss later, should become the basis for the development of much smarter energy systems for our society. Energy that is clean, cheap, and abundant. The one thing that Einstein never did discover was the comb. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. I think probably everybody here has seen that equation on a coffee mug, or a t-shirt, or maybe, God forbid, even in the physics book. And perhaps not so many of you, except the professor of physics that was introduced, would be comfortable explaining that to your children. But actually, I think everybody in this room all, already understands the basic principle here. You understand what this equation means in a different context. You understand what it means in the context of money. Not everybody likes math, but if you put a dollar sign in front of it, most of us are pretty good at it. <laughs> so Einstein is telling us here that mass and energy are really equivalent to each other. Now energy is a somewhat complicated thing. It comes in many different forms. There's heat energy, there's gravitational energy, there's the chemical energy in something like gasoline, which we have learned to convert into the kinetic energy of motion of these race cars. And what Einstein is saying in this equation is that mass is yet another one of these different forms of energy. And we can convert mass energy into other forms and other forms back into mass energy according to his equation, just like we convert money. So we all know that there are many forms of money. There are dollars and euros and pesos and yen, and we can convert one form of money into another. If you were to take a trip to Tokyo, you need to convert a lot of your dollars into yen, and it's easy to do. You just take the number of dollars you've got, you multiply by some exchange rate, and that will tell you how many yen you're going to get. Well, Einstein is saying the same thing about mass and energy. He's saying you can take mass, that's the M, multiply by some exchange rate, and that will tell you how much energy, E, you get in a different form. So it's mass times exchange rate equals energy, just like dollars times exchange rate equals yen. The exchange rate, Einstein said, is C squared. C is the speed of light. It's the fastest anything can move through space. It's a huge number, 671 million miles per hour. Pretty fast. C squared is C times C, so that is a very, very big number. And so Einstein is making the profound statement that even a very small amount of mass times a stupendous exchange rate will produce a very large amount of energy. So how large? 
If we were to take a single US penny using Al's equation, we would be able to supply all the energy that a million people use in a day. A million people's worth of energy for one penny a day. Or equivalently, that penny contains as much mass energy as we now get by burning two million gallons of gasoline. Two million gallons. So some of you may be thinking, maybe the fair price of gasoline really is two million gallons per penny. Hope none of you is being ripped off. <laughs> okay, now I have, this is probably the most famous equation in all of science, and I'm glad to say that I have a picture for you of the moment that Einstein made this discovery. <laughs> he figured out mass was a form of energy, all he needed was the exchange rate, and he simply had to go through the alphabet and find the equation that fit just right. <laughs> So I hope no one actually believes that. Okay, let's take this equation and do something with it that's important to society. How can we learn from Einstein and solve our energy needs? How can we get the energy that all of us want and need without destroying the planet? 